business, life, and relationships. This is the Growth to Freedom Show. Now, here is your host, Dan Cushell. Welcome to GrowthToFreedom.com, the show that helps you transform your life, business, and relationships. I'm Dan Cushell, and thanks for making us part of your day. We've got a great show today. I mean, are you ready for more mastery, growth, freedom, tip strategies, insights, wisdom to be able to help do that? By, our, by the way, our show today is presented by Done For You Solutions, doneforyousolutions.com. We'd love to connect with you. You can connect with us on Twitter at Dan underscore Cushell. That's Dan underscore K-U-S-C-H-E-L-L. Or email us at info at growth to freedom dot com. That's info at growth to freedom dot com. And by the way, we've got a special resource package that we're making available today for you for free. So we'll share with you how you can get your hands on that later in the show. So let's dive into it. Our guest, our expert today, uh, is somebody that I got introduced from Dr. Jeremy Weiss. If you want to listen to a fascinating interview, make sure to go check out growth to freedom dot com forward slash fourteen. Dr. Weiss sharing some incredible wisdom about, you know, dealing with obstacles, de- overcoming obstacles, and, and, and running Inspired Insider. He introduced me to uh, Daniel Figella. He's a recognized email and marketing expert. He's, he's, a ser- he's a whole lot more than that, by the way. He's a serial entrepreneur, run a few companies with a fascinating story. Get this, when he was in college, he, he wanted to fund his college education, as I understand it. And so he started a brick-and-mortar business in a niche, right, a niche business, working with Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which is something he's got an incredible passion about. You can go check out some video of him at scienceofskill.com. It's fascinating to see him. And you'll want to check out a video he's got on there called David versus Goliath, or David versus the giant, if you will. And you know, so he's a student of kinesiology, physiology, mind and body, which is you know one of the reasons I was so intrigued. Because you might be asking yourself, why the heck would you have someone who ha- comes from a background with Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Like I said, a whole lot more than that. He's a he's an evil scientist in a great way as it relates to developing targeted marketing strategies, ROI, lifetime value. Also, with a new project he's working on. Uh, the emergence of technology and psychology, uh, working with tech emergence. So, Dan, it's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you on the show today. How are you? Dan, I'm doing great. Glad to be here, brother. I'm glad Jeremy introduced us. Absolutely. So you have this fascination with skill development overall. So why don't you tell us what is your fascination with skill development? I mean, you're a young guy. How did you get into this this whole world of kinesiology, skill development, uh, et cetera? Yeah, um, you know, for me, I mean, uh, I very early on, um, I was fascinated with human potential. So how can we be more productive? You know, even as a when I was first getting into college, I started realizing that I couldn't juggle all of my passions at once. You know, I was trying to get into speaking. I was competing nationally in, in martial arts. I was uh, doing all sorts of different things. And I, I, I realized I couldn't juggle my time the same way. And so I really wanted to get into um, how do we learn to learn better? How do we learn to learn faster? And how do we make the most of our time in ourselves? And, and got into kind of the psychological uh, study of that. So my undergrad was in sports psychology, and then my whole graduate degree was, was basically on the, the science of skill development. How do, we, how do we learn to learn faster? So for me, it was just I wanted to juggle everything I care about in life, and I wanted to get good at the things that matter to me, like martial arts and business skills and email marketing and marketing automation. And uh, and, you know, I, I figured the psychology would be a good place to start. Awesome. And, and as you're watching right now, as you're listening, I mean, would you like to learn how to learn better, how to learn faster, how to maximize your human potential? Well, Dan can show you how to be able to do just that. So, Dan, you built a company up at 25. You had this fourth, as I understand it, this 4,000 square foot brick and mortar business where you were doing training, personal sessions, you know, a lot of different strategies and training that you were doing there. You ended up selling it at 25. You've now ventured into a lot of different arenas. So why are you so passionate about entrepreneurship, finding niches, finding holes in the marketplace uh, for yourself? What excites you about that? Yeah, you know, for me, Dan, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's ultimately just pursuing my own values. I think, I think some people, and, and I have nothing against this whatsoever, I think we should all pursue what we, what we all care about. I think for some folks, there's excitement sort of within entrepreneurship itself, just kind of the game of growing and watching the numbers and setting up systems and, and sort of the, the excitement almost like it would be for a sports game or something. 
Um, for me, it's, it's really about sort of moving towards my, my biggest goals that are really ultimately important for me. And right now that involves, you know, consulting and marketing automation, doing things like, like that. But it's, it's ultimately working towards sort of influencing global policy in terms of technology and neurotech and, and things that I really care about. So for me, Dan, it's, it's not, you know, I, I do love business, don't get me wrong, but I love it as a conduit to what I care about most, my own highest values and aspirations, what I believe to be my, my greatest potential contribution if, if I'm going to live as well as I can as a human being on this earth. Um, and so entrepreneurship, I, I see as the, the best path there too. So it's not, it's not so much that I just, man, I just want to set up a new business and run it because money and business is fun. It's more like, hey, here's the straightest shot to what I think I could be if I lived the best and fullest life that I could, and entrepreneurship is the path for me. That's awesome, and it, yeah, I think it speaks to, to what our show is all about, you know, the, the idea of mastery, of growth, of achieving freedom, you know, that peace of mind that we all deserve, and there are strategies to be able, there are rituals to be able to do, and you talked about contribution. So not to put, like, this esoteric approach on our show today, but for you, let, let's say, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years from now, speaking of your contribution, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be remembered as? Speaking of, you know, this being the conduit to the bigger, better things you want to be doing. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to get really lofty, and people probably lose me and sort of tune out, but that, that's all right. Um, you know, that, that, like, happens with my family and stuff. Um, <laughs> is uh, it, it, is well, in, in the short term, it's going to be having a lot of other people in the information marketing and software and other, other businesses that, that like double their revenue within a couple months of working. So marketing automation is like I want, to, I want to have the rep of really being able to help a lot of other entrepreneurs as I come up in the game. But in the long term, Dan, outside of like being a marketing automation consultant guy, um, like the big, the big game for me, Dan, is, is that I'm actually of the belief that sort of within my own lifetime um, – uh, brain machine interface technology and 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 uh, neural prosthetics and and artificial intelligence will will get us to a point where we'll start legitimately as we already are and you know I don't have to go into the research and bore you that I have a TED talk about this but um, we'll we'll be able to tinker with emotion tinker with memory tinker with the constituents of our own minds and and that 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 will actually be pretty thoroughly underway in our country and elsewhere. Uh, within, let's say, you know, three to four decades, and, and in my my opinion, that's kind of a long ball, three to four decades. But uh, but that will will legitimately be kind of enhancing what humanity is. And I I think that Dan, um, you know, again, this is lofty, right? I'm going to lose a lot of people uh, by saying this kind of. But but uh, but for me, I think that there's there's probably a right and wrong way to pull that off, and that some semblance of global transparency around the direction of research that tinkers with human minds is is going to be our best shot, I believe, um, to give us the best swing at a, at a positive future at whatever we sort of, you know, take our own evolution, where we take our own human experience, um, that, that transparency and, and safety in terms of our global policies in those technologies um, will be as, about as ethically relevant as any technology that, that hath ever been, um, and maybe much more so than any that hath ever been. And so my grand influence uh, will be in that, in that domain of neurotech and AI and sort of uh, policy and safety in those areas. Short term, it's about marketing automation, helping people grow, but long term, that's what I'm about. That's fantastic. And I don't think we're losing anybody because I think it's fascinating to get behind the why people do what they do, right? Which, you know, you're a master of psychology. You know, you brought up emotion. So as you see yeah. things evolving, right? You know, one of the things that you know, I, I talk about five capabilities that we need, one of them being personal productivity to become, you know, really hone in and, and master. As you look at the emotional ability of people with the fact that things are condensed in time frames, what would you say for you are some of the rituals that you put in place, Dan, that are so critical to your personal and business success that keep you grounded emotionally to allow you to accomplish the things you do? Yeah, you know, um, and, and should, we, should we kind of keep this in the purely business realm or the business and personal realm? Where do you want me to kind of go here? I got a lot of rituals for sure. Beautiful. Why don't we start with uh, personal rituals, you know, to okay, be, a, you know, be more productive? Uh, you know, go for it. Yeah, so on the personal side, um, I, I'm a big reader of biography, Dan. I, I think that biography is actually, um, you know, I, I love I love me some books, right? I like reading the selfie healthy stuff. I'm I'm always I'm digesting business books at, at, at a borderline sort of uh, voracious pace. Um, but I, I'm a even bigger believer in biography, and I really uh, the story of Gandhi. I don't know who's familiar with Gandhi out there. Um, I'm not aiming to walk his path exactly, but but I like a lot about Gandhi. Now, Gandhi took time, despite working you know 20-hour days, oftentimes, um, to focus 
and and he he actually legitimately meditated. I don't meditate, but but since uh, tuning into his biography a, a while back, I've I've kind of further hungered myself in my own morning routine to sort of stay anchored in in terms of uh, what's going to keep me in line with my highest goal. So it's very easy to get to the end of a week and say, man, you know, I got all this stuff I really care about. What happened? Um. So what I do every morning is. I update a sleep tracker that I have. So I try to get less than 40 hours of sleep in any given week. Um, and I sort of have like, you know, ways that I've like uh, punish myself if I get more than 40 hours of sleep in a given week. So I always, I always get, uh, get less than 40 hours in a given week. Um, so I, I update my sleep tracker and then I, uh, I, I go over my overall goals for the quarter, for the month, and for the week. Now, these are written in very succinct language, so I review them swiftly and I, I drink them into my brain again and again. So I, I review hone in on the weeklies, but I go over my quarterlies and my monthlies uh, in the early morning hours as well. Then I look at my Google calendar, which normally already has my priorities laid out, and I map out soup to nuts. What do I need to move around and adjust and alter in order to make sure that today is as lined up with my quarterly objectives and my big vision as possible? And I take, you know, a solid 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes to write down what am I going to ask this person at this meeting? Should I move this appointment to later? Um, should I take this three-hour block of time and cut out all my appointments and do this one thing that didn't get done last week? And I'll actually think through that while I'm sipping my tea or coffee in the morning, and then I, 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 I cement those into my cow, and then I write my daily affirmations about what my biggest goals are, and then I, I continue with my day. So I take that little pause in the morning that, that was so inspiring to me from some various biographies, Gandhi being one of them, uh, to, to root myself in what matters and to make sure my day is aligned with that. That's fantastic. Let me see if I've got this right. So you start your day with the ritual, morning routine. You, you Number one, you work to get less than 40 hours of sleep in a, any given week. You use yep. your uh, sleep tracker to be able to do that. You, yep. you go through your, your quarterly, your monthly, your weekly, and daily goals, right? You plug in with your Google Calendar. You go through your priorities. What am I going to ask? And then you close it out with your daily after. I mean, that's a routine and a ritual that's powerful for mastery, growth, freedom, and also focusing on what you want. So we'll have more with Dan Fagella on GrowthToFreedom.com right after this. Welcome back to GrowthToFreedom.com. Are you looking for ways to improve your ability to tap into your human potential? Are you looking for ways to automate your business? Are you looking for rituals to be more productive? develop your capabilities. Well, our expert today is Dan Fagella, and we have covered a lot already. Let's summarize the first segment of the show. We've been talking about rituals to start your day, right, Dan? We've been talking yep. about, you know, your bigger vision. You know, what was really apparent to me is how clear you are on your vision, not only of what you're doing today, but also in the future. You know, I've asked sure. some experts that those questions, you know, and that would have been a 30 minute answer because they'd be kind of bumbling and stumbling around as, uh, yeah. as Chris Berman and bumbling and stumbling right into the end zone. But you, I mean, you nailed it. I mean, you know, it was very succinct, very clear. It's obviously obvious you've thought about it. Now, obviously, again, you have spent, you know, many years, close to a decade in the science of the mind and the body and psychology and physiology and how it works together. So why for you, would you say with your study, with your background, would you say that rituals like you do are so important? Yeah. You know, I mean, in, in the domain of skill development, I mean, I'm not, I won't bore everybody to tears in the research. Uh, there's a couple schools of, of thought around this. Um, there's one by the name of a guy named Mihai Csikszent Mihai, mm -hmm. who's the author of a very famous book called Flow. That a lot of people who are not into uh, psychology as a hard science, but are more into pop psychology, are familiar with a book called Flow. Very, very famous book. Another guy by the name of Anders Ericsson, who has a little bit of a different model uh, for skill development. Both of them in, involve, as you would guess, uh, repetition as sort of a, a core and, and fundamental of, of developing any any actual skill. I think it goes beyond that. So in addition to, you know, you go into any judo Olympian gym, right, you're going to see people drilling techniques. Um, you, you, go, you go into any, any, any institution business that has a really great sales force, you're going to see people on the phone all the time. You're going to be pe seeing people training their sales skills all the time. Um, so in addition to actually ironing out those rituals, sometimes having some kind of a set template to be able to follow – actually frees up mental space. So, Dan, have you ever seen, you ever watch, now I'm not a basketball guy, but if you ever watch basketball, you, you see guys do the same little one-two kind of shuffle before they take their free throw shot? Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're essentially 
um, that I mean, in the sports psychology language, they're they're sort of dumping their mind out of, of sort of all the random hodgepodge that could be getting into and putting their mind into a routine state that they've replicated a thousand times. This is a state of shooting my and Dan, we're having some technical difficulties. I, I know our engineer can get back with you here. And so if I heard you correctly, you were talking about the idea of, you know, essentially what a basketball player will do is we'll get in practice. You know, Tony Robbins speaks of it in terms of a few things. You know, you've got your, your number one, you want to develop a high standard. Number two, you want to, you know, focus on the story that you tell yourself. So what, what Dan was just talking about is how a basketball player will get themselves out of the story of all the noise and all the distraction going on and ultimately get into a state. And you can be in an optimum state, a peak state, or you can be in a non-peak state. So what athletes do, what great business people, what Dan is referring to is getting into that peak state that ultimately creates the strategy that ultimately hits the mark. So, you know, in anything that you do, you can, you know, like Dan talked about, you can drill the technique, you can be in practice, by the way, you can also be out of practice overall, and there's proven psychology, proven studies that demonstrate and show that you can get yourself into practice by simply visualizing what it is you want to do. In fact, there, there are studies, and, and uh, uh, Dan has just uh, joined us back, uh, yeah. Thanks for handling that, Ramon. Uh, th the ability to be able to, in our mind's eye, get into a r routine or get into that ritual. So, Dan, can you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, with with respect, and again, a lot of this kind of, you know, the traditional, a lot of the traditional literature is in Olympic sports where there's a lot of attention, a lot of money, countries really care a lot. This is not really from the combat sports space, which is very much underdeveloped in this in this regard. Um but a lot of the literature, literature is in sport, right? Getting your mind in the right place in, in sport. But I think the lesson for the folks tuned in who may not really care how many free throws they can shoot <laughs> right. is the fact that you can develop a similar routine, sizing the right things, where you're anchoring yourself in the proper thoughts, where you're setting yourself up for kind of the, the mindset and mind frame of success by going through the same regimen that does that in a methodical way, just like a wrestler you know, in, in the Olympics, it's going to, you know, flap his thighs and do six jumping jacks and do a really high jump and clap his hands and then come to the middle of the ring every single time. Um, and, and just like, you know, free throw is going to, you know, someone doing a free throw do the same thing. You can do a similar uh, act in sort of the the uh, corporate athletics of, of work, you know, of, of actual uh, mind work. It's not just a physical game. So I think anchoring ourselves in a place that's going to leave us productive and juice us with energy. Certainly, you mentioned Tony Robbins. He's a great uh, exemplar of someone who can really elaborate on that, but but it certainly applies well beyond sport, and, and for me, it's a daily thing. That's great. What what other daily rituals are most important for you? So you've got your morning ritual. What what would you say are some of the other rituals? I mean, you take everything away from you, you that you would make sure that you were doing on a regular basis to build success. Yeah, I mean, for me, Dan, I mean, a lot of my businesses are built off of email. So we do, like, you know, we do 85. This, this month, we're on point to do about 85 thousand uh, bucks in, in recurring revenue for the martial arts niche. Um, and so, so much of my business is, is email that actually some of my rituals are around how you write a campaign, like in, in a simple way, how do you kind of distill a campaign to the same kind of checklist. So I can go through that in half a second in terms of some kind of tangible takeaways. That'd be great. Go for cool. it. Okay. So, you know, a, a lot of the time, Dan, um, when you, you, everybody's heard of the term autoresponder, right? You write an autoresponder. Um, so what what uh most most people sort of are, are writing them wrong. So for us, a lot of our business, Dan, uh, you know, we're I, I, at some point we may or may not talk about the Tim Ferrising of a business, but yes. for us it's very important that systems run themselves. And for us, email drives a lot of self-turning systems for marketing, self-turning systems for making money, converting sales, and it's very important that those systems run themselves and that they convert at a very high rate. So for us, Dan. Um, what we do before we write any campaign is we poll that particular customer segment or audience and or call them, and we discern and determine their top three in order desired benefits from our company and our suite of products and the biggest objective that would keep them from getting in, from converting, from purchasing our products. And we actually orchestrate all of our sales messages, first one to last one, 
based on really honing in on and smashing those objectives and honing in on and exemplifying those big objectives and benefits. So we have a routine of customer research that happens before we write an autoresponder so that instead of converting, you know, two out of every hundred people down the funnel, you know, we convert seven and we, we make a lot more money um, on, on autopilot with our email stuff. So we have a little bit of a, a customer survey. And we're building out funnels all the time for ourselves and for clients. And so if there's one routine that I kind of swear my life by and, and bet my revenue on, you know, we're, we're going to be at a million dollar run rate here with this e-commerce business. It's really because we dial into what customers care about. And before you write an autoresponder that's going to stay in your system for months and months and months and, and sit there and be exposed to all your customers, it's best to really anchor it in those values. Anchoring it in those values. And speaking of that, you know, if I hear you correctly, what you're basically saying is that before you actually go out and shotgun or firehose somebody with info, you're actually asking them questions. In other words, it's a Socratic style methodology. It also creates engagement. And when we come back, I want to get more into the science of this. You know, how do you offset, you know, the fact that there are certain open rates, certain click rates, so you're only getting fragments of percentages of your potential client base. We're going to get more into human potential. We're going to get more into optimizing your talent. That and a whole lot more with Dan Fagella here on GrowthToFreedom.com. Welcome back to GrowthToFreedom.com, the show that helps you transform your life business, and relationships. Let's summarize the first two segments of the show. We've got Dan Fagella. We've been talking about you know, optimizing human potential. Are you interested in optimizing your human potential? Are you interested in automating your business, building systems that run by themselves? Uh, how about marketing automation? How about the ability to influence at a global level? Uh, how about building into rituals? Well, Dan's been sharing techniques and strategies on how to be able to do that. We left off with the idea of building into campaigns. And Dan talked about how with his company that has a recurring revenue model that impacts thousands and thousands of clients and hundreds of thousands of subscribers each and every month that he doesn't send out an email without first thinking through what are the top three desired benefits and what would keep you from doing business with us as he does customer research. So talk more about that, Dan, the science of what you're doing and the application of how you do it. Is this as simple as putting together a three or four question survey? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, some of our niches and, and markets we're pretty familiar with. Some of them we're moving into for a first time. So our, our my core business, uh, which is, you know, again, I didn't, I didn't learn marketing automation by consulting. I learned it by doing it myself. Yes. Uh, our core business is actually in a bunch of different industries. So when, when we're in a new space, Dan, um, yes, we will do open-ended surveys. We'll do open-ended surveys about what brought people to us, open-ended surveys about uh, if, they, if they had purchased products, what were the main benefits they were looking to get from those products. And we also do something that, in my opinion, um, a uh, qualitative can't do so. We'll do oodles of that. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know what? what you know what kept you from purchasing? What would have kept you from purchasing? Um, what's frustrated you about other people teaching these things in in other in you know in this current space in fitness, martial arts, whatever? Ask all those qualitative questions. But something that that really nothing can replace is getting on the phone and calling all of your buyers. So you call people that got the credit card out, and you talk to them as people, and you you, you get a sense for what they want as people and you hear their voice you hear them talk about these benefits you have conversations and you start to tease out the kind of person the reasons the impetus the demographics all this kind of uh deeper insight around your audience you really can't do through a survey so when we want to build out a marketing automation campaign now when we send out a broadcast email on a daily basis we're not necessarily doing a science experiment every time dan but when we're going to build out a succinct, uh, like a, what, what some people would call an autoresponder, I actually think that's like very language. When, when you build out a marketing automation campaign, which for us involves multiple tiers, higher ticket products, all kinds of stuff like that. When you build out a, a marketing automation campaign, it's important that this is not something you're going to do once. And if you get it right, great. If you don't get it right, who cares? This is something that you're going to do once. And every future prospect is going to go through this same automated experience. So, Dan, that's why for anything that's going to be a concrete, ongoing, ever-exposed marketing asset, we must think vigilantly yes. through the values and benefits. We must think vigilantly through the objectives and, and also how we segment our customers. Do we want to segment by industry, by age, by gender, uh, by business 
And I, and I love this strategy, you know, get, getting on the phone and having the, you know, technology, of course, yeah. people fall in love with it. And in many ways, it becomes a success trap because people just fall in love and think that's their only vehicle. You know, working yeah. with Joe Polish, you know, in the, in the role that I am uh, working with him, we built out a campaign here not too long ago. And it was, you know, just a simple book that we wanted to get into people's hands. But it was followed by a phone call. And we talked to literally 90 percent of the people we talked to were like, you know, hey, I just felt like I needed to order from some something from Joe because essentially Joe's model is free and then high price but essentially people felt obligated like I felt like I just had to order something because Joe's always putting out so much value (laughs) that we just had to buy it I mean I think it speaks to what you're talking about being values based right and then getting on the phone and having that direct conversation so how important do you think that that real connection that real bonding make creating the human experience in your automated platform or business is for building growth. And we've got about 30 seconds before we go to break. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So just to sum it up, I think it's astronomically valuable. One thing I'd say is when you call these people up, you ask them why they came to you, what would have made them leave, what they cared most about, what they're currently doing to try to solve that same problem. You want to save that as a document, as, a, as an asset to continuously review as an ongoing resource to help you inform the rest of your marketing. So it's really invaluable because of how many ways it can help every landing page and campaign that you create once you really know the person. That, that's fantastic. So why, what, what's the core reason, what, what else are you doing to solve that problem uh, are, are some key critical questions to be able. So as you're listening right now, as you're, how could you apply this in what you do in your business? Number one, how can you apply the rituals that Dan's been talking about? Number two, how can you apply the idea of thinking through about building marketing automation that is recurring? And if you put it, had to put a gun to your head and you could never communicate in a, uh, uh, in an environment outside of that automated process, what would that do for your business? What would it do for your business if you had a recurring model that essentially was communicating on your behalf every minute of every day to your subscribers, prospects, and also your clients? There's ways to be able to do that and a whole lot more. We're going to go more and deep into this with Dan right after this on growthtofreedom.com. Welcome back to growthtofreedom.com, the show that helps you transform your life business and relationship, bringing you the ability for greater mastery, growth, freedom. And today's show, our guest, to give you a summary of the first three segments of the show, we've got Dan Figella. We've been talking about optimizing human potential. We've been talking about marketing automation, getting into some great strategies and tips to be able to build your following and to engage, to create customer response. You know, Dan, basically you talk about calibrating your actions in one of your prior interviews that I heard you talk about this. So if we were to strip away all your, you know, past, you know, call it success, your business success. I mean, you've obviously built an incredible recurring business model here. If you were starting all over again today, what would be the steps that you would take that also apply to those watching, those listening right now? Yeah, well, you know, one, one uh, step I would have taken uh, earlier on, Dan, is gone immediately into a niche, that, or a niche in industry that would really permit me to scale. So I started off, you know, you, you don't really know what you're doing when you, when you first start a business, right? Like for me, it's the whole Dan Kennedy unemployable thing. It's like I, I just can't work for other people, so I... I, I wanted to do something related to my passion that would kind of take me closer to my grand dream that I've already talked about. Um, and, and so I got into the jiu-jitsu space and, and the physical gym we sold, but the e-commerce business, as it turns out, it really wasn't able to scale. So uh, we, we could only get that business to about $40,000 a month in, in recurring ongoing membership fees, and, and we couldn't really get it past 50, 60, 70, 80 like we are now. Um, so we had to move into other niches later, like a year and a half later, and if I could turn back the clock, I would have gone into a bigger niche um, right right off the bat. And I, I would have, in the beginning, Dan, in my marketing automation stuff, I wasn't born with. So in the beginning, I was doing every single marketing campaign manually, trying to make sales every day, wondering if, you know, how much money am I going to make today based on how many emails I send and how well they do and how my campaigns work. Uh, I also would have automated my most important campaigns early so that I wasn't spending literally 40% of my time scrambling to put together the next promotion, which is what I did for my first year in business. Pretty pretty dumb thing to do, but if I could turn back the clock, I would have automated more and picked a big industry. And, and it's interesting you say that because I, you know, I meet and talk to a lot of people. There's a big difference in an e-commerce platform, Dan, where 
you're really running a business versus being a company that's just in the advertising space, right? You know, it's the difference yeah. between doing those one-off promotions all the time versus really having a sustainable longevity model. And it sounds like you've really honed on on that. And that's what you talk about in marketing and automating your business. And, you know, in a recent interview, I heard you talk about Tim Ferrissing your business. So speak to that a little bit. Yeah, sure, sure. So, you know, I'm, I'm juggling three LLCs right now. I'm trying to continue to do a lot of speaking engagements at Ivy League universities about neurotechnology and virtual reality and things along those lines. So when I Tim Ferriss my business, it's, it's not so that I can, you know, eat bonbons or, or, you know, go to dancing lessons or something like that. It's so that I can run other businesses. Um, but so, so I don't want anybody to, you know, uh, get the wrong impression of me here. But, yeah, it's important to Tim Ferriss your, your business. And what I mean by that, Dan, is to – to basically have down pat the systems that make the money, handle the customers, deliver the product, et cetera, to, to such a, a, a well-oiled calibration need to be involved in any given week. So in other words, Dan, yes, sometimes I will spend a lot of time in, let's say, my e-commerce business one week because I have you know big projects I want to pursue or whatever, but at any given time, I know that if I do my 11 a.m. touch points on a certain number of days with my core team, and if I do X number of communications with the, the bigger promotional partners that we're working with for the next few weeks, that's kind of all I need to do for the week. Yep. So what I'm, what I'm not saying is like, oh, stop working. But what I'm saying is put the systems in place so that if you, it, it, you're, you're only really needed, like needed, needed in order for money to be made at a certain number of points per week in order for that business to keep humming along and pumping out the cash. Um, and, and most people are, are sort of, you know, they, they never get to that point, right? And, and I certainly didn't for my first year in business, and it took me a while to get there. But when I say Tim Ferriss, your business, I mean determine everything that can be automated in terms of making money and delivering product. For us, we do digital product. We handle our, our shipping with a, a shipping house, so it's easy for us. But um, and, then, and then what are what is your minimum viable involvement? You know, how can you boil that down to, you know, to be cliche to the four-hour work week, right? What would that actually look like? So for me, it, because I want to juggle three businesses and sometimes I want to spend more time on one than the others, I got to know what my minimum involvement is and make sure everything else is going to run on friggin' autopilot here. And that doesn't happen by accident, folks. That happens on purpose, right? And there, there's so oh, much yeah. wisdom in what you're talking about here. Years ago, Dan, I had a mentor, you know, he, he taught me, he said, you know, the problem with most businesses, they spend, you know, 80% of their time prospecting and only 20% of their time enrolling. And they're chasing this and chasing that and they're caught up in their business instead of on it and said, what if you could just set up a model that would allow you to spend 80% of your time in an enrollment phase and mostly automate that, <laughs> right? And or have yep. other people do it and only 20% in the prospecting. So what that means is it's, it's smart marketing, it's smart automation, it's smart innovation working on your business instead of in it. Now, Dan, when people work with you, I mean, you've, again, you've got, you know, three LLCs, you talk, you've got tech emergence, you've got uh, CLV boost. When people yep. work with you directly, well, what are some of the, the outcomes that people experience? I know you do coaching, you do a variety of things, you have a variety for of sure. tools for starters, for people that are seasoned and all the way across the board. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. so in, in our work with CLV Boost, we're essentially applying a lot of the hard-won lessons of marketing automation that I was forced to learn in my own e-commerce company. So we do work with seven-figure businesses and in, in bigger spaces like financial software and things like that. And then we also work with smaller folks that are kind of a, a one-man band who really are, are looking to scale things up. Um, in terms of results, we're, we're lucky enough to have some, some pretty, pretty astronomical stuff in terms of uh, like multiples of revenue on new businesses. Like we, we have a guy in the fitness space that's doing five times more per month than he was seven months ago and sort of uh, like moving to California, like total change in lifestyle, like all, all kinds of cool stuff. But in terms of how the process works, really for me, Dan, you know, a little bit of what I described around knowing your customer and then building out that marketing automation architecture to maximize CLV, if there's one thing that's in common, you know, the, the industry's not, the amount of revenue the company makes is not, none of those things are in common client to client. The one thing that is in common is dialing in who our customer is and then dialing in how we automate the way to sell as much of our stuff as possible uh, with a system that will run when we are not there. Yes. And that is not like a, let's write random emails. That's a thought-out process of structured upsells and downsells and building that into an architecture that we can test, refine, and watch it run. Um, and, and that is something most people are incapable of doing by themselves. So our first one or two months with any given new client is really focused on building what we call the automation architecture that kind of makes that, makes that money possible. 
automation architect, and I think every business can learn from this conversation. You know, what is your automation architecture right now? What rituals do you have in place, not only for yourself, but you're teaching your team to integrate so they can optimize their human potential, right? And, you know, Dan, as you've learned, you know, you, you talked about what you would do differently and moving. And I actually look at the fact that you got in a niche. I mean, it forced you to be vigilant in your numbers. Oh, it it forced you to be vigilant and paying close attention because you were dealing with the law of low numbers to yep. ultimately be able to build larger numbers. And you made it yep. work. And, and now you can take that literally to any other thing. So what would you say has been the greatest lesson uh, in short, you know, I had a mentor years ago. He said, you know, true success is knowing that, you know, you can take it all away and give someone a notebook and a pen, drop them off in the middle of anywhere, <laughs> and they could li- literally within about 12 to 18 months be back to the same place that they, they were at. So for you, yeah. what are some of the greatest skills, talents, and abilities that you appreciate most that you've developed that every business owner, every entrepreneur should look to put in place to, to build success? How, what's your take on that? For sure, for sure. You know, for me, I mean, like you said, Dan, I think you touched on something important. You know, we were forced to focus on customer lifetime value. I cannot focus on volume in a small niche. We had to focus on how much can we sell, how many ways can we be valuable, uh, and how many different uh, senses can we be valuable to our audience. So one one lesson that, that I've learned that I know is going to go with me in, in all my endeavors, including emerging technology and, and beyond, is really finding a product market fit, understanding and dialing into the audience Not in a, yeah, yeah, I know them, this is what they want way, but in a way that nails your copywriting and boosts your conversion in such a tangible, legitimate sense that it it really just cannot be denied in terms of multiples of revenue. So really dialing in customer market or, or, uh, yeah, product customer or or product market fit and then uh, nailing that to the level of your copy and really being able to segment people and treat them individually. So, Dan, knowing your customer for me is not knowing one person. It's knowing the different kinds of customers. We segment by gender, by age, by goal uh, in, in, our, in our marketing business, by, by uh, you know, amount of revenue that a company makes or something along those lines. So there's, there's so many ways that you can per, uh, permutate your marketing message to be more and more dialed in. And that is a skill that, by golly, every single day pays off in every business I run. Um, so dialing in marketing, not just to a broad level, but to an individual level and translating that to copy that sells. I mean, that is... That's the that's the the core takeaway. If there's one from everything I've learned thus far in business, oh, that's that's great advice. And I love the two questions that you asked. And I mean, I think everybody can learn from these two questions. And I they're so important. I want to repeat them if I heard them correctly. And if I didn't, please correct me, Dan. Is yeah, yeah, sure. number one, how can we be valuable? And then number two, which I have, I don't know that I've ever heard anybody articulate it the way you just did. Is how many ways can we be valuable? Yeah. Right. And then how many different ways can we be valuable and then you're you're taking it and you're you're individualizing from gender age goals and a whole lot more to make it more personalized and it comes down to that experience right the experiential treatment why do people go and spend whatever three four or five dollars for a coffee at starbucks at the experience the individualization the the personalization and you you've really honed this in now you know uh, dan i want to give people a chance to know how to reach you uh, get in touch. I mean, there's just so much depth of what you can show somebody, and I'm looking forward to building our relationship deeper too. So, tell people how they can reach you, where they can go, etc. Certainly, yeah, yeah. So, if, if folks, I mean, we only got to touch on the tip of the iceberg in terms of. Money. I yes. really wish we could have done this with pictures because I do a better job that way. We have a white paper on basically five of our plug-and-play marketing automation strategies that we use in service business, e-commerce, you name it. That's at clvboost.com. That stands for customer lifetime value. So clvboost.com. We have a a white paper. It's drawn out in pictures that like any fifth grader can read. It's like I've I've spent enough time in this stuff to simplify it. So clvboost.com. If people just want a white paper and understand what we do and plug it into their business, that's a good way. If people want to reach me, just let me know that you came from Dan. Let me know that you came from from Growth to Freedom, um, and hit me at dan at clvboost.com. That's actually my, my own personal email. Just make sure that, that you say that Dan sent you, and I will be way more than happy to say hi and help you out. Absolutely. And if you don't say Dan referred you, you know, then he's definitely not going to help you out. Then I'll <laughs> say, get the heck out of here. Who, who are you? Like, get, go away. Go away. I've got, yeah, I've got enough you, clients you to deal with. Uh, so, Dan, this is fat. I want to encourage you. Go to clvboost.com. Check out what Dan's up to. He's going to help make your business better. Optimize what you do. He's going to help improve your conversion, your long-term value. You can also reach him at dan at clvboost.com. I know we've just got a couple minutes, so I'd like to almost take a shotgun approach, Dan, at a couple things. Uh, what is your biggest 
business failure and or mistake and what'd you learn from it? Man, um, well, okay, uh, this is a little bit embarrassing. I, I, when I was running my martial arts gym, I had basically saved up all my money. You know, I was a broke undergraduate college kid when I started the thing. And then when, as soon as I got out of graduate school, I, I was paying out the ears for Ivy League graduate school. And, and I, I had a little bit of a lump that I had saved up, private lessons all these years, and I, I spent it preemptively on expanding our, our academy uh, to from 2,500 to 4,500 square feet. Um, and we had the students to justify it to some degree, but it was such a huge hit to personal net worth. And the way that luck would have it, Dan, um, we had a roof collapse in that martial arts academy months later. So, you know, three or four months after I just put my whole life savings into this, it was entirely permeated with mold, and we had to tear up all the carpets. We had to pull up all our mats. We had to uh, basically disassemble and kind of deconstruct a lot of what I just dumped all my money into. And... Um, it was close. It didn't do it, Dan, but it was really close. If there was anything that ever put me close to kind of going bankrupt, it would have been that. Now, luckily, I pulled out of that. I, I built that business back up to 20K in revenue uh, and then sold it. And then I, I, I had my e-commerce business at about 20 grand a month by that point. But when that roof collapse happened, I realized uh, you start to throw everything on the line and you put yourself in a spot where you're living back with mom and pop. And uh, that was almost the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened. Oh, that's a, that's a great lesson to learn from. You turn that negative to a positive. I would encourage you to go visit Dan at clvboost.com. Also, hit him up at Dan at clvboost.com. And, Dan, that's our show for today. I just want to thank you for being on the show, my friend. It's been awesome. Of course, brother. Thank you so much, Dan. Absolutely. That's our show for today. I'm better for it. We're better for it. And I appreciate you. And now is your time. Take action with what Dan's been sharing with you. Optimize. Put those rituals in place. Put the automation strategies in place. Look at building an automation architect. You can get a recap of the show at growthtofreedom.com forward slash 25. If this show resonates with you, I hope you'll repeat. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. Seize the day. Make it a great week. We'll see you next time on growthtofreedom.com.